Hey, Planeswalkers, Mithras here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Welcome to today's episode of Top Deck. I appreciate you tuning in where we are covering a number one <laughs> mono red deck, my friends. Um, this one's got a special spot in my heart. Many of you know that I'm a big mono red player, particularly have been um, for the last few seasons. Additionally, uh, for Zenikar's Rising, um, certainly one of the most played decks for me. So wanted to come back, circle around, because it's certainly morphed and changed. And second part of that, this particular deck was piloted by a player of the name F3KF2 or underscore KF2. Congratulations um, on hitting number one with this deck. You've certainly broke, I'll say, the camel's back in terms of best of three. Um, many, many people and things that I've read have said, you know, that this is not a tier one deck. And you've certainly maybe proved that it could be, um, at least can show up to play. So uh, kudos for that. Now, Planeswalkers, we do have a lot that we're going to go through here, so please feel free uh, to hop down into the details, check out the timestamps. We're going to talk about the uh, objective and deck list here. We'll cover the sideboard, the how-to, and then play some best of three and best of one competitive magic for you. And then we'll wrap that all up with some afterthoughts around meta and what we can do potentially in Kaldheim, because when this does drop, it's probably either the patch is going to roll out or uh, it will have rolled out already ready and i'm looking forward to piloting some new decks for you here um hopefully right out of the gate so we'll see we'll see how good my uh my drafting skills are to build uh build some decks so um with that planeswalkers i want to dive right into it here but before i do so i just want to say thank you um truly appreciate your support just crossed the 1500 threshold here um it's been a fun rocket ship so really really thank you um please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there and additionally like the video great ways to connect down below as well and feel free if you have questions or comments throughout um to let me know down below or hop in the discord server my friends so let's hop to it here uh, because we do got quite a bit to get through again in terms of objective or strategy this is a mono red deck typically that's pure aggro um, this one is an aggro deck so everything below three is all about dealing damage or clearing lanes and then anything above four is typically uh the hammer on, <laughs> the hammer on the nail you want to close the game um, and that's pretty much what these are going to do or enable you to get there um, so that's pretty important the other callouts here um, it doesn't run my crawling barons which i which i truly love um, like my version but it does run a fabled passage which i like as being unique as an additional trigger on the hellhound here which is pretty important um, so really this is what we got going on today very excited to be playing this it's a strong best of one board and certainly um, the sideboard is teed up nicely for best of three so let's go ahead now and talk about the deck in a little bit more detail um, because we get the gist in terms of the aggro side um, but here's what we got going on with hellhound um, it's got landfall whenever land enters it gets plus two plus two uh, until end of turn we got fervent champion this guy's got first strike haste other knights get plus one plus zero off this and additionally uh, when it's attacking and then additionally uh, equipment spells cost three less uh, to attach to this guy shocks deal two damage to any target we got spike fields one damage to any target if permanent was dealt damage this way though it would die this turn um exile it instead and then additionally this is also a modal land so it can enter tapped um, we have rimrock knights these are three one creatures that can't block but also uh, have an uh, a sort or instant adventure where you can uh target a creature and get plus two plus zero till end of turn for uh one we got the good old robber the rich here this creature it's a creature human archer rogue always a mouthful um it's got reach and haste. Um, don't forget about the reach. A lot of people forget that. Um, whenever it attacks, we're going to exile one of our opponent's cards off the top of their deck if they have more cards in their hands. Um, and then anytime a rogue attacked, uh, we can certainly cast that spell and we can treat any mana base as, you know, essentially to pay for that, um, which is really helpful because it's colorless to cast. Then we got Royal Eruption, so this one's a little bit different. Um, it's got a kicker of five. It's a sorcery spell, three damage any target. If it was kicked, uh, it deals five damage instead. So this is a nice one over the top. Uh, additionally, in terms of taking out creatures and planeswalkers, you can cast Shatter Skull Smash in here, split the damage X between two of those. Um, and as you divide it, uh, if X is six or more, you can double that damage. And then as this enters, again, modal land, we can pay three, have it enter as an untapped land, or it will come and tap. 
We got another adventure card here with Bone Crusher. Uh, it's instant adventure for stop, deals two damage to any target. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Additionally, it's a nice 4-3 body. Um, whenever this creature is a target of a spell, um, it deals two damage to that spell's controller. We have Annex the Hardened Forge. This is a super, super powerful card. Um, its power is equal to our Devotion in Red. Whenever this dies or another creature dies, that's a non-token. Um, create a 1-1 one, one Seder. If that creature or this creature's power is for a greater, create two of those. Um, we got the good old uh, Phoenix here. This guy's got Escape for four. We can exile all three other cards from our graveyard it comes in with a plus one plus one it's got flying in haste and it's got a nice little fire breath there for plus two plus zero until end of turn we got torbran torbran is a nice top end closer here we got a dwarf so we're going to see more of those i think from kaldheim um, but if a red source we control would deal damage to an opponent uh if an opponent controls it deals too much Two, that damage plus two instead. Um, we also got Ox of Agonis here. This is a nice refiller when it enters. We exile our hand. We get to draw three cards. We can escape it for two. Exile eight other cards from our graveyard. Ox will escape with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, then we got good old Embercleave here. So Embercleave's that flash... Flash equipment, uh, one less to cast for each attacking creature. We attach it when it hits the board, um, and we are that creature gets plus one, plus one, has double strike and trample. Um, so that is what we have all in on our mono red aggro deck here. Very, very excited about that. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about the sideboard um, for our best of three. Again, very strong and best of one. I like the board, main board um, as well. Um, so sideboard here, we got a two one knight. Um, it's also an adventure card. We can uh, cast the sorcery spell here to destroy target artifact. You can place against the artifact decks, monument decks. Um, certainly played against Great Henge, so Gruel decks. Um, you could play it against a mirror match, those kinds of things as well. Also good against uh, things like Glass Casket. Um, so great spots for this one. Then we have Roiling Vortex. So this is a pretty interesting one here. Um, I, I think there was a lot of play very early on with this, um, particularly also against some of the Omnath decks, just because that opponents can't gain life there this turn, so keep that in mind. That's a big one. Um, so you could use it against things like Mono White or other decks that are trying to kind of claw back even things like the mud artifact deck that we played but what this enchantment does is at the beginning of each player's upkeep roiling vortex is going to deal one damage to them whenever a player casts a spell if no mana was spent to cast this spell um, vortex will deal five damage to that player so where where are you going to play this one um, so the biggest the biggest places is essentially for for standard here. Um, it's going to be a absolute go to for control. Um, essentially, what you're trying to do is. Um, is shut out uh, and get in early on some of these things uh, against your opponent and do that ping damage because they're not going to be doing a ton of damage to you. Um, so if you can consistently get this stuff going, it's really going to help that aggro uh, aggro pace game. It seems a little awkward, but trust me, it's it's uh, it's one of those things. And I, I will tell you, um, given my conversation with uh, F3 underscore KF2, um, again, congrats. Um, they will We'll probably certainly second this um, again they're the number one player number one deck so I, I think it's a good good spot in the meta and something something certainly different um, additionally here then we got scorching dragon fire um, you're gonna play this against creature based decks three damage to target creature or planeswalker you also play against planeswalkers uh, if it would die exile it instead great against knights decks great against mardu um, great against boros warriors M mirror match um, gruel aggro those kinds of things um, then we got a Phoenix of Ash. I would play this uh, when you need over the tops or particularly against rogue decks. This is a good one to put in there. Uh, then we got Relic Robber. So Relic Robber is an awesome card. Um, here it's got haste. When it will uh, deal combat damage to a player. That player creates a 0-1 colorless uh, goblin construct artifact creature token. Uh, this creature can't block and at the beginning of our up creep. At the beginning of our upkeep, this creature deals one damage to you. Um, I like this against some control decks, not all control decks, but some. You don't want to play this necessarily against a Doom deck. They drop a Doom that can sack the 
sack the goblin uh construct which can be you know uh <laughs> more detracting than anything else um but something to consider uh certainly mid-range it's a good one absolutely like against uh rakdos um could be good against sultai those kinds of things too um oop. then we have the akron war akron war is a great card to have against a gruel aggro decks um it's a nice saga gain control target creature for as long as this is on the battlefield until next turn creatures are opponents control attack each combat if able and then three each tap creature is going to deal damage uh, to itself equal to its power um, good against mono red good against anything really creature based um, then last but not least we got another ox vagonis i would play this against control decks late game decks maybe um, well actually probably more of like a, a doom deck um, something to think about but ideally you want to be getting the damage in faster um, so the other the other piece here with this this one works against rogues obviously um so there we have it in terms of the sideboard my friends now we're going to talk about it in terms of the aggro the mid-range and the late game lineup um so against other aggro decks you're going to be fairly well set um the biggest choices that you may want to make is like if you want to bring ember Shieldbreaker in um scorching dragon fire and potentially the Akron War. So you can go anywhere from like four to six. You can certainly add in some of those other ones. Um, what you may want to consider pulling out, um, we are running a healthy 20 lands, 24 with that. Um, for best of three, that's that's pretty pretty solid. Um, it's gonna help you with some of that flooding again. You know, I like the Crawling Barons. Um, what you can look to do is potentially remove Phoenix of Ash. You can get some other value out of some of these other things in terms of the direct damage. You're not gonna give up space here. Um, Phoenix of Ash though will give you that ability to recover from your graveyard, um, so you can keep that in mind. Uh, additionally, I do like Hellhound, um, but that's always a spot that you can switch out. Same with Rimrock um, as well if you need to. Those would be other other spots I would consider cutting um, just to strengthen my, strength in my board just a little bit uh, in terms of what I'm playing. Then when we get to mid-range, we got things like Rakdos mid-range like we talked about. We can have other main, more creature so based like a Sultai, uh, Gyruda. You guys have seen that, um, like those ones. You don't see a ton of those, but a lot of fun. Um, anyway, uh, so about that and what you want to, oh, with the Mono White mid-range deck we just ran the other day. Um, what you want to think through here is are they more creature based or are they more control based? If they're more creature based, you can do something similar to what you did for the aggro. If they're more control based, you're going to want to go with that Rolling Vortex. Um, that's really going to catch them off uh additionally um i also like um relic robber like we talked about and phoenix of the ash in there um so that could be seven what would you what would you move in or move out um again i would consider looking at looking at these two potentially i'm um, going to depend on what they're running but that's a good spot i like to keep some of the other stuff intact here on the higher end you could always go lighter on the ox of Agonis if you need to um, but if they do have that direct kill spells um and the ability to leverage that graveyard could could be some play for you and then last but not least we got late game decks um here uh you're most likely just going to flop in the four uh rolling vortexes what you can remove here too if you want to is ox um, and ember cleave i'm still a fan of keeping this in late game if you need to uh to refill particularly if they they can uh, remove a lot of your cards off the board um, but that's always a spot rim rocks decent there um also you can consider uh removing um uh, let's see here. Also, you can remove the shocks um, and royal eruptions as well if you need to. So that's always something. Um, you can drop out the pure damage uh, as well because you're not going to get as much value about that. So going back to the mid-range deck, um, that might be something to consider too is uh, swapping out the shocks and the and the royals too. So that's another thought um, that you can do. So keep those keep those things in mind. Uh, pretty important. So that Planeswalkers is the aggro, the mid-range, and the late game lineup. We talked about strategy that deck in terms of aggro again this is the number one uh ranked deck I'm very excited to go play this for you here today again if you got questions comments let me know down below great things in the details additional deck details all that i'm, I'm forgetting to mention that now but um <laughs> let's go ahead and hop into it here um yes we are going to save and exit uh we'll go play some competitive magic here so here's the top 1000 golgari control deck that i did yesterday along with the tier list so you guys go check that out um I, I ran this one 
flawlessly. I was super happy. Not that I maybe played it flawlessly. I'm sure there were some hiccups, um, but most definitely we went out, so that's always fun. Um, and a great way to kind of close that out. And I thought that was going to be my last deck, and I lied. So <laughs> actually, I didn't lie. I just ran out of time um, and wanted to uh, show you guys this, this deck um, because, hey, why not play the number one mono red deck? So heavy arms it is, my friend. Let's see what we got going on. We got an Obosh Prey Piercer deck. We don't have a turn one. We got a turn two. We got a burn turn two. Ooh, I'm actually heavily considering mulliganing. Because we're not super fast, but we do have... Uh, I'll keep it. I'm going to keep it. I, I, I don't like mulliganing as much in best of one, but this deck does have a lot of one drops, so that's the one problem. Um... There we go. So, so Planeswalkers, and we have that. Um, so Planeswalkers, again, always appreciate your support. Please feel free to subscribe down over there. Additionally, like the video if you like it. You can like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Twitch. All right, let's see what they drop. Yeah, Teamer deck. There we go. Of course it's a Teamer deck. Now we can go Annex. The problem is we're gonna have to get through this relatively quickly before they ultimate them. Uh, this can be a tough, tough matchup. I can live with that. So we still have Castle on Breath here too. Uh oh. So that's big. Um, that's real big for us. So I need to think about how I want to play this one. I'm just trying to think if I'm going to have lethal next turn. So I can play giant. Um, I could play giant. They'll make him three, four, five, six, six, six. They'll play. They'll play love struck though. So they'll play the love struck. They'll get a draw. They'll have two of those. I'm not going to be able to kill two. Um, so I think I do have to play this. Do you think that's the best play? So now they can put a Terror of the Peaks on, though. So now we can do this. Oh, they're going to self-kill it. Okay, we're good. So again, what I was thinking is three. They could have... Well, they might not have double-blocked. They might have hit in and left that up, too. Um, I, it wouldn't have been lethal, though. got royal um so let's do this let's see what we what we hit
There you go. So now I need to make a choice, which will be this. They didn't play another creature. Uh, they can. They're gonna flash the brazen in. Is what's gonna happen. Um, so we'll do this. I can kill. Um, just debating, debating here. Because if I go to two, they can hit me with bone. They got one card. Well, then if they if they cast the brazen. I can at least block with Annex here. If they get rid of Annex, then I'm in trouble. Yeah, they had enough for Ultimatum. And that's what I figured they had. What's funny is I've totally played this guy earlier today, too. And they're still in the same spot. They've been playing for hours. Hours. <laughs> And I can't believe they whiffed. Could do this, but I need to I need to keep uh I need to keep that up. That would have been 10. That wouldn't have been enough. We'll take that guy off the board. They had another one though. No, they're not gonna whiff again. That's pretty funny though. They have been playing all day. That probably got them to mythic. Probably got them to mythic. I hope that game got you to mythic, heavy arms. Alright. Let's go to the next one, because if you've been playing all day, you certainly deserve it. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead here and play our next best of one. Probably going to do two of these and do one best of three here again, just given the time. But we are playing aggro, so we'll see. Alright, I cannot pronounce that name, but let's go ahead. Uh, this one's quicker. Keep that. Oh, rogues, it is so much fun. I'm going to save my spike field for now. So good news is this one's 
chock full of uh, stuff in the graveyard. Bad news is... Let me get this guy on first. Could have kept that back. That's all right. I want to get two damage through. They're at six. No, oh, they're going to be golden there. There we go. We'll keep Robert really Rich back now. This is a nice play. Thank you. Ooh, with the tutelage. Ooh. All right, reach my friends. That's all right. And we're going to do this. I'm going to dump the Torbrands. Wow, they might be playing some some crazy crazy stuff here. So, let's let's do this. I don't want to I don't want to get hit by Zerith. 6 7 8 And not a single, not a single, ah, I was hoping for a land. There we go. I'm going to hit this first and see if they counter. Boom. Yeah, we took down a rogues deck with mono red. One of my favorite things to do, my friends. Oh, that felt good. Felt so good. So one and one and best of one. Let's go ahead and play some best of three. That is actually, it's a tough matchup, uh, but it's one of my favorites. And oddly enough, uh, I, I was talking in the Discord the other day, and uh, my mono red deck, similar but different, uh, happened to be like 100% against rogues. It was, I was actually so slightly surprised when I was asked. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and play our traditional standard ranked. Here again is the top 1000 Golgari control. We're playing the number one 
Mono red deck. Yes. All right, Planeswalkers recap for those of you that are joining us here now at the best of three. We went one and one in uh, best of one. We lost to a teamer ultimatum deck, heavy arms. I have played actually quite a few times now. I think maybe that win gave them uh, mythic and uh, two. Then we played a rogues deck. Uh, and best of that. So we went one and one, pretty fun. Um, now we get to test the best number one mono red best of three deck. Oh, that's a horrible start. That's a little bit better. I'm going to dump one rim because we got everything on two. I want to make sure I get to three. Mono white it is. So this will be a good matchup. So we might have to side in the ro Roilings uh, just so that they don't get the life gain. But then that's going to hurt us every turn. I'll have to think about it. I don't mind playing mono white with mono red. Um, it can certainly be a challenge, though. Not going to attack in. Yeah, there you go. We'll take it. I think they have... Well, they didn't have it. So here's how you do this. Get that off the board. And then we dump in there. And we take their card. Alright. That's what I wanted. We'll wait. We'll wait. Oh, there you go. Let's see here. What are we going to draw? What are we going to draw? This is a tough match nonetheless here, my friends. Now I actually have to keep Robber the Rich back. So Annex has enough, I think. Or, no, we can, we can tackle in. Let's go into it. We'll swing it. Ouch. There we go. So now we'll get not yet, but we can get the Luminarch off. We're gonna take a lot on this one though. Oh.
Oh, what do we want to do here? So let's see where the Luminarch puts its counter. That's good for us. So this is the aggro version, uh, not the life gain version, per se. Keep this one back for a turn still. Oh, air stide. Whoops, whoops, oops, that was a mistake, sorry bud. Oh, you can bring it back, that's fine, that's fine, at least you get to recover. So here we go. There is unfortunately, given what we have, this is one of the hardest matchups for mono red. Um, my my mono red deck actually runs a um, shadow spear. And I, and I do that specifically um, to break uh, to break protection to break uh, indestructible and things like that so but I, again that's more of a best of one uh, thing here but we're gonna play some best of three so let's figure out how we want to do this um, I'm gonna change up a couple things here these guys are not as good against this. We need these. Um, I need the Acron Wars too. For I, again, this will slow them down, but we gotta pay it every turn. Um, it's not as good in this particular one because it is aggro. Um, I'm gonna actually pull out 
some of the rim rocks. So we need direct kill and over the top and steal. All right. Let's see if we can turn this around. This will be a good, <clears throat> a good match for us. Um, a tough one, absolutely. But uh, no rest for the weary. All right, let's see what we got going on here. So plenty of direct kill. We will keep that. Uh, except that we have one. One land. Oop. I got a little aggressive there. We'll see. Oh no. That could be fast. We could be done real fast here. Missing curve. I thought we had two actually. I thought there was another modal land in there. But there wasn't. So we had 40% odds. We didn't get it on the first one. Let's see how two, there we go. Painful. I gotta think about how we wanna do this too here. We have to hit this off the board. I know it's a little bit of an overkill. Can't self sack it. That could be the end for us here. Three. I gotta do this. Well, oh, they won't have it yet. If they drop another Luminarch, they'll be close, but... Nope, we didn't get there. Got screwed on the mana. Oh, painful. Painful. That was my fault, though. That was that was certainly my fault. Uh, we'll hold that one back. I think the only way I could maybe win this um, is if I block here. They put nothing else on the board. We draw a cleave. And we get enough damage through with the cleave. But it's not going to happen. That'd be an incredible top deck. It's not going to be enough, though. Axe would still be at 3 5. We get a 6 6 double striker. It's not enough damage. So certainly a smart move to split it there. But it's also pretty risky. Oh, it's a bummer. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think. I kill this, they move it over. I don't have any error. I can kill that. Nothing there. We're going to drop this guy. We 
It was actually very close. Very close. Not bad. Not bad. So we did re we did recover close there, but all right. I'm gonna play one more. I'm gonna play one more best of three with this deck because there hopefully will be a fast match. Um, and I do I do like mono red, my friend. So we'll do we'll do two. We'll make our we'll get our revenge here. Hopefully, let's do it. Let's shoot for it. We'll do one more, mainly because this is the best of three mono red one, as well. So one and one, best of one, oh one so far, best of three, lost to a mono white aggro deck. That is unfortunate, my friends. Oh man, we got a long queue. Long queue. All right, we'll give it one more shot here. If we don't queue up in 30 seconds, it's because all you guys are watching everyone else play Kel Keldheim, and I, my poor soul did not get a <laughs> early invite. I actually don't even know what the process is. I haven't had a lot of time to look into it. Oh, man. Come on. If that is the way it's going to be today. We will close out. Oh, so sad. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go do the deck review here. I need to get some sleep. It's late, so I'm um, a little bit behind. Too many competing things today. Um, but again, let's close out here with the mono red best of one uh, and best of three. And additionally, we can uh, talk about uh, Keldheim here quickly. Um, so again, very fast one today. I apologize, you guys. I did want to get you something um, to keep up with my my daily videos here. But again, this is the number one mono red deck finished their um, mid mid January season here again by uh, F3 underscore KF2. We did hit uh, a nice round in best of one where we split. We lost to a team or ultimatum deck. We ended up beating a uh, rogues deck and then in best of three we had a, a mono white aggro deck um, and it was interesting to play mono white aggro deck actually um, in best of three don't run into that quite a bit um, so however mono white aggro is certainly a tier one deck list for best of one which you guys can check out um, so that's what happened today um, super fun matches uh, i think we boarded fine for the best of three unfortunately i actually uh, clicked a little bit too early there um, for that second match i did think uh, I'll, bl I'll blame royal and shatter skull kind of looking similar and being kind of a modal end so it's not though but um had one didn't have enough there um so re in reality um you know in terms of best of one this is certainly a tier one uh deck um we know that uh in terms of best of three you, you know generally speaking this thing has not um i'll say got much love um but certainly um our friend here did a nice job hitting number one so that's undeniable too um on top of that, I, I would say it's probably, you know, given the states, it's it's certainly tough when you got to when you run against a ton of control decks. Obviously, that's what the sideboard's queued for with Roiling Vortex. So I like that. Um, I think it's adjusted well for those things, um, and certainly teed up uh, fine for a lot of the meta. I I would give this honestly um, probably you know mid mid tier two, um, you know maybe three quarters at the, at the highest. Um, and and again, I expanded it to 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 four here. Um, um, maybe, maybe at the at the lowest end, a, a tier a tier three, maybe. But I, I I could see this having a nice spot in tier two. Um, additionally, when we get to Caldeheim here, um, starting today, tomorrow, whatever. Yeah, I, I filmed this 24 hours before, maybe. Um, so uh, you know, there's certainly going to be some impactful red cards. We talked about. Um, 
Arnie, I think it is Broken Brow. Um, that's a three drop. I think that certainly can make an impact. There's a few other things in there um, that will do a nice job as well. So just keep an eye out for those. We got the Frostbite um, Direct Damage card too. Um, I, I'm waiting for those snow lands. I think the <laughs> Mono Red Snow Land, there we go. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, can't wait. Anyway, um, with that said, Planeswalkers, you know, that is the list. That was, that was what we did today. I know it was a little short. Um, um, you know, two best of one matches, um, certainly fun and best three got, a, got a little bad, bad luck on that, on the one match. So I do apologize and was a little aggressive. Um, but with that, as always super fun list, I'm a huge mono red fan. You guys know that, um, traditionally in best of one, it runs northwards of, well, 60%. Um, my, my particular deck list runs 65. I would say probably given this as a best of three, um, I would speculate um, that our friend here ran it uh, fairly successfully as well, probably probably 60 plus. Um, so stay tuned, Planeswalkers. We got a lot more things coming your way here. Keldheim's coming up. I'm pumped. I'm going to be drafting hard. Um, we'll get something out here because uh, you guys love seeing these lists. So as always, appreciate your support. Please feel free to subscribe down over there. Like the video if you like it. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Stay up to date on content like this. Great ways to connect down below in the details. Shout out to the patrons and YouTube members. Uh, appreciate uh, Crippled Snowman and Elfie as always uh, from patrons. So um, with that, Planeswalkers, I just want to close again. It's been it's been fun. It's been real and it's been real fun uh, with with uh, Zenikar's Rising. So I'm um, looking forward to what, what comes next and uh, we'll be right there with you guys. So uh, stay tuned. Take care. Mithras out. And until next time, tomorrow.